functional equations. This topic is, I would say, it doesn't have a, you can say, unique way or procedure or standard operating procedures to solve questions. They're very unpredictable type of questions. You have to, you have to think in different way laterally to find your function out or whatever is the required condition out. So many a times these questions are tested in Olympiads. If you look at international mathematical Olympiads and all, you'll find that there is a chapter of functional equations. So the fact that it is being tested in Olympiads clearly suggests the fact that these topics are not that straightforward. They're not conventional that you have certain, you know, methods and uh, formulas and you can apply it to get the function back. There are a lot of hit and trials you have to do. We have to see the periodicity of the function. We have to see what happens to the function when you change the name of the variable. Many times you need to do differentiation also. So I think you have already been exposed to functional equations before, so I don't need to talk more about it. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to give you some uh, commonly seen functional equations. But let me tell you that is just a list which you can just copy it on your notes, but might not be useful at all. Okay, so let me give you some, some instances of functions that satisfy certain functional equation. The most commonly seen one is the one which is this one f of x plus y is f of x into f of y. Mostly the functions which satisfy these kind of functional equations are of the type a to the power x. Okay, so this is a commonly uh, uh, seen solution for this type of functional equation. And I don't think so, I need to tell you why. Okay, next type of functional equation that you'll see is f of x plus y <coughs> f of x plus y sorry not f of x plus y it's f of x plus f of y is f of x y such kind of functional equation is satisfied by logarithmic functions so log x with some base a, okay? Where you have to figure out that a by the use of some additional condition given to you in the question, okay? Uh, needless to say, if you, if you have f of x minus f of y is equal to f x by y, the same type of function will satisfy that is logarithmic function. If you have something like this, f of x plus minus f of y, okay, uh, plus, uh, just consider plus to be once and then minus and same in the formula also, the top part will correspond to the plus, oh, sorry, yeah, and the bottom part will correspond to the minus, so I'm writing it in one go. Can you tell me which function satisfies this function? Sin inverse. Sin inverse x. Yeah, which function satisfies this function uh, equation? Cos inverse. inverse x. This is tan inverse. Tan inverse. Okay, now the next one is the one which is most commonly asked. F of x into f of one by x 
is f of x plus f of 1 by x. Okay. Now, this is satisfied by a polynomial function which is given by plus minus x to the power n plus 1. So this function, this is something which we need to know. You can easily verify it also. You can easily verify it also. So this type of functional equation is very commonly seen. Okay, try to prove this. Proof is very simple. Just take a polynomial function in general and try to find the coefficients of that polynomial function which will meet this criteria. Okay, you would realize that only plus minus will come as a coefficient. That's all the terms would be zero. Uh, do you want me to do this? Do you want me to prove this? Okay, let's let's prove it. Proof for the seventh one. Uh, I'll write it down on the next page. So if you have Then we claim that a polynomial, let's say the polynomial is okay, this satisfies this. Okay, now if you put it in this given functional equation f of x we all know is a0 x to the power n a1 x to the power n minus 1 all the way till let's say an into f of 1 by x will be a0 by x to the power n a1 by x to the power n minus 1 all all the way till an and this is equal to sum of these two functions Okay. Now, if you compare the coefficients, uh, let's start comparing the coefficient of x to the power n on both the sides. Let's compare the coefficient of x to the power n on both the sides. What will I get on the left side? How will you generate x to the power n? Only when a0 multiplies with a n. Correct. So if a0 multiplies with a n, you will get x to the power n. There's no other way to get it. And on the right side, it will only come from a0. Yes or no? Now, this means two things. a0 could be 0 or a n could be 1. But this is not possible because in a, in a polynomial, expression the leading coefficient cannot be zero so if you are considering it to a degree n a0 cannot be zero correct let's compare the coefficient of x to the power n minus 1 what do we get on the left side which term will contribute to a x to the power n minus 1 terms Oh, oh. Yeah, sorry, I was thrown out of the call. Yeah, can you see my screen now? Yes, sir. Yeah. So if you co compare the coefficient of x to the power n minus 1, on the left hand side you will get a0 a n minus 1. Correct? No. Because the term before this will be a n minus 1 by x and that multiplied to this will give you a x to the power n minus 1. Can I say I will also get x to the power n minus 1 from a1 a n? Correct? And this should be equal to a1 on the right side. 
because only this term will have x to the power n minus 1 okay now remember an is 1 an is 1 means this term will be a1 again so a1 a1 gets cancelled off that means a0 an minus 1 is equal to 0 a0 cannot be 0 what does it mean an minus 1 has to be 0 am i right similarly you will realize that an minus 2 would also be 0 an minus 3 would also be 0 and so on now what about the last term what about the last term i think we had already figured out the last term is going to be 1 what about a0 sorry what about a0 let us compare the constant terms on both the sides if you compare the constant terms on both the sides you would realize on this side you will get a n square let me write comparing constants on both the sides comparing constants on both the sides you'll get a n square and on this side you will end up getting constant term as 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 how much this into this sorry uh, a n square and also a not square uh, sorry my bad a not square that will also give you a constant term correct rest other terms they would be there but they would be zero because a1 square a2 square etc they will all be zero we have we have already seen that over here so those terms you need not write correct on the right hand side on the right hand side the constant terms would be 2an right okay so this gives you a not square plus 1 is equal to 2 so a not square is equal to 1 so a not could be plus or minus 1 in other words you realize that a not is plus minus 1 rest a1 a2 all the way till a n minus 1 is equal to 0 right and your last term is 1 that means your given polynomial equation was plus minus x to the power n plus 1 got it okay so this becomes your solution for that functional equation okay other than this i would like you also to note down Ajay, do you want to copy this or should i move ahead you want to copy this please do so Okay, few things I would like you to add on to that list. Number one, uh, was was there any numbering for the same? Did I give you any numbering for the same? Okay, just I would write that important <coughs> points here. If your function satisfies this functional equation, that is f of a minus x is equal to f of a plus x remember the graph of such a function will be symmetrical about x equal to a line 
okay so if any function graph if any functional equation is satisfying this functional equation then its graph would be symmetrical about x equal to a line please make a note of this very uh, important concept several questions have been framed on this in past and if you realize your function f of a minus x is negative of f of a plus x then the graph of this function is symmetrical about the point a comma 0 even function and odd functions are special cases for this if your a is 0 if your a is 0 then it becomes f of x becomes a even function okay here if your a is 0 then your f of x will become an odd function because a comma 0 will become origin in that case and x equal to 0 will become the y axis in that case okay but these are the properties in general that we need to know these are the properties in general that we need to know okay so what i'll do is i'll take a quick break over here i'm sure most of you would be hungry now so let's take a break right now the time i'm assuming it's 11:17 am uh, we'll meet at 11:32 am with more questions on functional equations i think i'll not be able to do much in uh, def definite integrals but i'll see if i can start the topic okay see you after the break so let us begin with some questions on functional equation again as i told you there is no uh, you can say conventional way to solve questions you have to try a lot of things you have to try special values you have to try putting one value as the other and see whether you can solve it uh, i think most more more, cl more clarity will come when we take questions uh, let us begin with this question f of x is x plus f of x minus 1 if f f 0 is given to you as 1 find f 100 easy question to begin with Okay, Pradyut. <clears throat> That's not correct, by the way, Pradyut. Correct, Rocher. Param Hia. Oh no, Hia. Hia has made a mistake. Ruchir Parik is correct. Param is correct. Rajdeep, again small mistake. Okay, <clears throat> let's discuss this. I think you would have got an idea how to do it. Here you realize that your f of one is one plus f of zero. That's nothing but two. Okay. f of 2 is nothing but 2 plus f of 1 which is 4 right f of 3 is 3 plus f of 2 which is 7 right so the trend that is going here so your first term 
sorry, your zeroth term is one, right? This is your zeroth term. First term is two, then four, then seven. I think you can make out that the difference between these terms are in AP. So one, two, three, the next difference will be four. So it will be 11. Okay. So this is your first term. This is your second term. And like that, you need to go till your hundredth term, which is your hundredth expression over here. Okay. Now, how do I solve this question? Let's say I call the sum of these terms as uh, let me write F hundred as S. Okay. Write the same as one shifted. Okay. Subtract it. What do you end up getting? Zero as one plus one plus two plus three all the way. F of 100 minus F of 99 will give you 100 if I'm not mistaken. Correct. F of 100, F of 100 minus F of 99 will give you 100. Correct. And this finally is minus F of 100. So take it on the other side. So F of 100 will be 1 plus summation of 1 to 100, which is 100 into 101 by 2. So answer is one plus five zero five zero, which is five zero five one. Easy question. You should have got it. Okay. Any questions here? Anybody? Okay. Let's move on to the next. A function f of x is defined for all real x if f of a plus b is f of a b for all a and b are as inputs to the function f of minus half is minus half then find f 1005. Okay, Richard. Both the Richards, okay, good.
ओके कीर्तन ओके लेट्स चेक दिस आउट सी लेट्स से आई पुट ए एस जीरो इन दिस लेट्स से आई पुट ए एस जीरो सो आई गेट एफ बी इज इक्वल टू एफ जीरो करेक्ट इवन इफ आई पुट बी एस जीरो आई गेट एफ ए इज इक्वल टू एफ जीरो ओके व्हाट डज इट इंप्लाई इट इंप्लाइज एफ ए इज इक्वल टू एफ बी फॉर एनी ए एन बी फॉर ऑल ए एन बी राइट Correct. That means any two values you put there equal. What does it comment on the nature of the function? It comments that this function is actually a constant function. If it is a constant function, f of thousand five will be same as f of minus half. The answer will be minus half only. <laughs> Again, this there is no clear cut defined way to solve it. It's up to you how. Uh, smart you are in lateral thinking that you can solve it okay the real fun in maths is when there is no method known to solve it and you are trying to solve a question okay else maths becomes physics and chemistry which is driven by laws and rules math is supposed to be an abstract concept <laughs> that is why these topics are favorites in olympiads <coughs> is that fine can i move on to the next question any question that you would like to ask okay i'm just giving you an exposure it's not like you know i can take all the different types of functional equation question no i'm just giving you an exposure how to deal with such situations f of x satisfies f of x plus f two x is plus f of two minus x plus f of one minus sorry f of one plus x is x for all x belonging to real number. Find f zero. Find f zero. करेक्ट या या आई कैन रीड योर मैसेज विकास या आई कैन रीड योर आंसर आई कैन सी रुचे सिंह आंसर विकास आंसर या आंसर रुचे सिंह विल डिस्कस या विल डिस्कस इट अदर्स प्लीज रिस्पॉन्ड ओके चैतन्य आई गॉट योर आंसर See, sometimes what happens when the power goes off and I'm thrown out of the call, it doesn't allow you to send messages to me. <coughs> okay, so what is the approach here? Correct, Ruchir, Parik. 
So what is the approach here? You put x as zero. So if you put x as zero, you get f zero plus f zero plus f two plus f one is equal to zero. Okay, that means two f zero plus f one plus f two is equal to zero. Then what do you do? You put x as one because you want to know f one and f two also. So let's try putting x as one. So f one plus f two plus again f one plus f two is equal to one. That means two times f one plus f two is going to give you one, which means f one plus f two is equal to half. Okay, and from here I know that f zero is negative half of f one plus f two. So clearly your answer will become minus half into half, which is minus one fourth. So if you have got minus one fourth, your answer is absolutely correct. Those who got a half or a minus half, please check where you went wrong. Okay, easy. Okay, next problem. If a function f satisfying f x y is equal to f x by y for all positive real, all positive, all positive real x and y, if f thirty is given to you, f thirty is given to you as twenty, find f forty. Absolutely correct. Hiya, Vikas, K D G, Advik, Rochir Parik, Pradyut. Okay. So how do I get this? Wait, it's Wait, very simple. If you want to get f forty, try writing forty as such a combination which will give you thirty in its result. So I think I can write it as forty is. Ah, uh, 40 can be written as 30 into 4 by 3, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. So, if I write it like this, I can write it as f of 30 divided by 4 by 3. That means 20 into 3 by 4. That's 15. 15 is the right answer for this. Okay, easy. Let's move on to the next. Okay, this is our old function that we had derived, which we had proved a little while ago. F of x is a polynomial function satisfying this condition. F four is sixty five. Find F six. Excellent. Okay. Again, very easy question. 
Uh, now you know that a function which satisfies this type of equation is of the nature x to the power n plus minus plus one. Now if f four is sixty five, that means you are claiming that this is sixty five. That means sixty four is plus minus four cube. Oh sorry, I've already taken. Yeah, yeah. This can only happen when you have taken your sine as a plus. Okay, sine should be plus and n value should be three. That means your function is revised as x to the power three plus one. So f six will be f six will be six q plus one, which is two hundred and seventy. Absolutely correct. Any questions here? Easy. Next, f is the real valued function such that f of x plus two f of two thousand by x is equal to three x. Find f of x. Yes, any success, anybody? F of x in terms of x. What else? What type of question was that? <laughs> F of x will be in terms of x only, no? Or without x also, it can be can be constant also. Ah uh, no, that's not correct, Ruchi Singh. But good, you tried. Others. Ah uh, no no no. Correct, Dhruva. Sorry, uh, Dhruv. I'm habituated to say Dhruva because of one student that we have. Correct, Dhruv. Ah uh, no, Vikas. KTG also no. What is the full form of KTG? Sir, it's Keetan Gopal Krishnan, sir. Keetan. Okay. Yes. KTG, I have heard of somewhere. Bike? Is it a bike? Those bikes, no? That. Uh, so that's KTM. KTM. KTM, yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. So stupid of me. Sorry, yeah, KTM. That is. <laughs> okay. See, guys, when these kind of questions are there, the simplest way to solve this is one equation is this. Other equation is you replace your x with two thousand two by x. Okay, you can play with your inputs. So this side will become f of two thousand two by x. 
and this side will become back f of x and of course this will become 6006 by x right correct now think as if you have a simultaneous equation x plus 2y equal to something and uh, y plus 2x equal to something and you want to solve for x correct so what i will do is i'll multiply this with a, a 2 okay i'll multiply this with a 2 so i'll make it as uh, 4f of x plus 2 times f of 2002 by x plus i mean 12,012, whatever is it? Okay. I think I have put more zeros than required. Correct. Okay. Anyways, we are now going to subtract the two results. We are now going to subtract this result with this result. Okay. So 3f of x will give me this x minus 3x divided by 3 so your f of x will become 4004 by x minus x so this is your answer so your function is 4004 by x minus x this is a very commonly seen question okay it's not a difficult one Is that fine? Any questions here? Anybody? Can I move on to the next one? Let me know once you're done with this. Done? Copied? Yes. Okay. Done. I think Ruchir Singh is correct. Vikas, that's not correct. Uh, Ruchir Parikh is correct. Oh, I hope you have regained the internet now, Param. 
Yes, sir, it's back. Okay, let's discuss this. See, uh, here, you can play with your X and Y. Right? You can play with your X and Y. Now, what I'll do is, I will choose my X and Y relation in such a way that this input here becomes same as this input. That is, I'll choose my X and Y relation in such a way that 2X plus Y is equal to 3X minus Y. In other words, I'll choose y as x by 2. If I do that, see what will happen. This will become f of x. This will become f of x square by 2. This will get already cancelled with this, so I'm not writing it. And this will remain 2x square plus 1. So directly you can get your f of x as x square by 2. In fact, minus x square by 2 plus 1. This is your answer. So ultimately, the trick was to substitute this in place of y. Ah, okay. Okay. Let's take a slightly uh, more difficult question on this. Uh, then we can wrap this up. So it is known that there is a function <coughs> from natural numbers to natural numbers. In fact, I'll include zero also. So from whole numbers to whole numbers. Okay. And zero means including zero. Natural numbers including zero. Okay. Better I write whole numbers only else people will get confused. So there is a function whose domain and codomain are whole numbers. And this function satisfies this criteria f of x square plus f of y is x f of x plus y. f of x square plus f y is x f of x plus y for all x and y belonging to whole numbers. Okay. Find the function. Correct, Roger. Did you guess it? Sir, 
I used y is equal to zero, and then as orders or something like a like a oh, yeah kind of gas is that gas work okay. करेक्ट चैतन्य करेक्ट केटी जी Okay. Ah, uh, anybody wants more time, or should I discuss it? Karam, correct, Param. Let's discuss this. I, I'll do it in a very rigorous way. I think some of you would have also guessed it. Let me do it in a very rigorous way. Let's put x as zero and y as x. Let's let's put x as zero and y as x in the given e in the given functional equation. so that will give you f of f of x is equal to x f of f of x is equal to x okay let's say i call this as one of our findings okay now let me put x as 1 and y as 0 Let's put x as one and y as zero. So it'll give you f of one plus f of zero is equal to f of one. Okay. Right. Okay. Now let me do one thing. Let me take f of f of one plus f of zero as f of f of one. that is known to be one okay and here it will be known to be 1 plus f of 0 because of the property number 1 see f of f of x is giving you x so here f of f of this guy should be this guy correct and here f of f of 1 should be 1 what does it mean it means f of 0 is 0 that means f of 0 is 0 no problem so far okay now what i'm going to do is i'm going to put x as 1 and y as f of x in the very same equation in the very same functional equation i'm going to put let me let me take it on the upside as i'll lose a track of it let's take x as 1 and y as f of x so this will give me 1 plus f of f of x it will become isn't it that is actually x and this will become f of x plus f of x oh my bad x is 1 right so f of 1 1 1 f of 1. okay 
f of 1 plus f of x. So far, so good. Okay. Now, what does it say? It says f of 1 plus x minus f of x is f of 1 always. Let's say I call f of 1 value as a. Okay. Let's start putting the values. When you put 0, f of 1 will be a plus f of 0. f of 0 is known to be 0. So f of a is a. f of 2 will be? f of 2 will be? Put x as 1 here. So it will be 2a f of 3 will be 3a and so on. Okay. So it gives me a general feeling that f of x would be xa. Correct. Now what is this a? I have to figure out what is my a. For that, I can put this in the original equation I have. So in the original equation, in the parent equation that has been given to me, I'll put these inputs in AX and find it out. So my F of X is known to be X A. So if I use here, it becomes uh, X. So A times X square plus A times F of Y. F of Y itself is AY. So I can write this as A square Y. Correct is equal to a x square plus y. Okay, so if I see this condition, I'll get a square is equal to one. Right, so my a has to be plus minus one, but it cannot be minus one because if it is minus one, f of two would have been minus two, and minus two is not allowed in the codomain. So it can only be one, right? If it is only one, your function here would actually be X. This is your answer. Is that clear? A very rigorous way to do it. <laughs> Most of you would have taken a guess. Am I right? How many of you did it rigorously? Very few. I did it like half rigorously. Half rigorously. Yeah. Okay. Let's take another one. Again, these are not easy questions, let me tell you. Uh, probably if you get them, them in J advance, the only option that you have is to take a clever guess. <laughs> so there is a function from integers to integers. There's a function from integers to integers. This satisfies, this satisfies this condition f of f of n plus 2 is equal to n. Okay. And it is also known that f1 is 0. Find f of n.
करेक्ट माहित रुचिर सिंह रुचिर पारिक विकास हाउ डू गाइस डू इट करेक्ट नाउ द पैटर्न सॉर्ट ऑफ कमिंग अप पैटर्न कमिंग अप ओके Yeah. Anybody who did it rigorously? So is my thing correct? Because I did it rigorously. I don't know if it's correct. Yeah, it's correct. Okay. F of n is actually n minus one. How do you do it? Actually, now that I look at it, it's it's kind of pseudo. Rigorous. Hey, I don't think we can. Yeah. If you put values in, just start getting the previous number. Okay. So from there you figured out it's n minus one pattern. Yes. Okay. Anybody who did it without pattern, I'm not saying that by knowing the pattern it's not correct. Absolutely correct. Anybody who did it without knowing the pattern. Okay. Let's look into this in a rigorous way. A lot of analysis is involved over here. Uh, <coughs> if you call this inside function as let's say g of n, okay, that means you are writing something like this. Correct. Okay, now this is something which we call as f o g function, isn't it? So f o g function is equal to n, right? We know that n, or you can say f of x is equal to x, kind of a thing. This is a one one and on two function. Correct. We all know that f of x equal to x. even if your x is only allowed to take integers that will be a one one and on to function no doubt about it okay now if composition of a function is one one and on to then tell me which one of them should necessarily be one one and which one of them should be necessarily be on to if f o g is one one Which one of them should be necessarily be one one? F. Na? No. No. G. Uh, G. Yeah. G is necessarily one one. G must be one one. G must be one one. F may or may not be one one. G must be one one because if G is not <coughs> one one, <coughs> for two different values of the input, G will show the same answer and F. and hence f will show the same answer okay that will make the entire function become non one one or you can say uh, non injective right similarly if f o g is on to then which of them must be necessarily be on to f must be on to i think i had given this as a property to you when we did the types of functions please revisit those notes i think i had discussed with you uh, in the chapter inverse functions because i was i needed this one one and on to concept to talk about inverse of a function okay so g must be one one okay and f must be on to now here one more thing that you will see since g of n let me write over here since g of n is f of n plus 2 and if this is 1 1 then can i say f of n must be 1 1 correct 
yes sir and if f is if f of n is on to can i say g of n will also be on to in short what i'm trying to say is that both these functions are one one and on to that means fn and gn both are one one and on to that means they are bijective and if they are bijective both are inverses of each other that means f and n are inverses of each other because they meet this criteria because they meet this criteria that means fog is giving you an identity function right and they are both one one and on to that means f and g functions are inverses of each other agreed i think till here nobody has any problem <coughs> let's go further now it's given to me in the question that f1 is zero f1 is zero means what f0 is one sorry g0 is one isn't it because both the functions are inverses of each other am i right correct no now g0 is what g0 is f0 2 that means f0 is minus 1 is that fine agreed okay now since f of n plus 2 is g of n okay let us take let us take a composition with f <coughs> okay so we have already seen that oh, this result is already given to us right yes sir okay so what i'm going to do is let's not do this step this step is of no use uh, let, let's start with f of n plus 2 is equal to gn let us replace n with f of n Let us replace f with f of f of n. So this will become f of f of n plus two is equal to g of f of n. Okay, and g of f of n is known to be n. Correct? Yes or no? That means f of f of n plus two is equal to n. Now replace your n here. replace your n here by f of n plus 2 replace your n here by f of n plus 2 so what will happen f of n plus 2 i'm just writing the right side first on the left side you will get f of f of f of n plus 2 plus 2 correct Yes sir. Yes, Now yes, remember, remember f of f of n is given to us as n minus two from this equation. So can I write can I write this term as can I write this term as the one on the right hand side as f of n plus two minus two plus two? Correct me if I'm wrong. that is nothing but f of n plus 2 so what does it mean it means i you have gone out of space it means f of n plus 2 is equal to f of n plus 2 okay now start putting some values let's start let's start our uh, 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 value with some let's say i start with a zero okay f of 2 f of 2 is f of 0 plus 2 f of 3 is f of 1 plus 2 f of 4 is equal to f of 2 plus 
f of 5 is equal to f of 3 plus 2 and so on. If I go on all the way till f of n, it becomes f of n minus 2 plus 2. Add them all, you would realize that when you're adding, terms starting from here will start going off. This will go off with this. Correct? This will go off with this. Okay? Yes or no? So what will be left ultimately? What will be left ultimately? Can I say f of n minus 1 will be left here and f of 0 and f of 1 will be left here? Yes. Sir. Correct. So what do I get from there? What do I get from there? f of n minus 1 plus f of n will be equal to f0 which is already 0. f0 is minus 1. Huh? It was there only sir. Oh f0 is minus 1 and f1 is 0 right? Yes. Correct. So this term will go off completely. What was F0 value? Minus 1. Yeah, F1 was 1. And how many 2's will you get? So F1 is 0. Oh, F1 is 0. F1 is 0. Hmm. Yeah. And uh, how many 2's will you get? N minus two. N minus two plus one. So okay. N minus one. But does it help me to get F of N? I'm still left with F of N minus one, right? Yes. So post this, I think we need to check the pattern. I think, <laughs> I mean, we did all this thing to get back to the pattern checking. Uh, N plus, so F zero is known to be minus one. F one is known to be zero. F two would be? One. One. Yeah, I think. Um, is there any better way to uh, reach the result after having got this relation? It's a recursive relation. Can, can we try x square? Minus x minus two. Is it factorizable? So you get the root five. Right? Yes. No, no, that's factorizable, no? Yes. yes. So x minus one, and we get x minus two, right? No, sorry. you take x x minus 2 plus 1 x minus 2 yeah x plus 1 and x minus 2 is equal to 0 so so i think i got it from here so once we added those things uh -huh. so if we add everything we get uh, f of n plus f of n minus 1 is equal to 2n minus 3 mm -hmm. and then uh, we one second, one second. can you repeat once again so we add we added those things that you got right uh, mm -hmm. All of those they add up to f of n plus f of n minus one is equal to two n minus three. Where are you talking about? Yes, yeah, so when we added all these equations, we got uh, f of n plus f of n minus one is equal to two n minus three. Okay. And then when we substitute n as n plus one, we get f of n plus one plus f of n is equal to two n minus one. And then we subtract these two. 
and we get a constant value. So we'll get it's a linear function. F of n uh, plus f of n minus one is two n minus three. F of n or f of n minus one is. Uh, was it coming? Yeah, it's n minus one times. Huh? Okay, ah, two n minus three. Correct. Yes. Yeah, so, so now we take n as n plus one. So then we get f of n plus one plus f of n is equal to two n minus one. Okay. So then we subtract the two. So we'll get f of n plus one minus f of n minus one as or uh, two. And that's a constant value. So it doesn't depend on n. So you get as a linear function. If you get f of n plus one minus f of n, no? f of n minus one. Yes, yeah, so that will be equal to two. So it's a linear yeah. function. Then anyways, you we would have got here. No, how how do you say it's a linear function? Oh yeah, sorry sir, I'm not excited. <laughs> okay, now see uh, one thing that I can say here is it is. Uh, alpha minus 1 to the power n beta 2 to the power n this is your f of n f f0 was minus 1 right f0 was minus 1 so alpha uh, plus beta is minus 1 and f1 was 0 f1 was 0 okay so if you add it, beta becomes minus one third. Okay, and 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 and, and alpha becomes uh, minus two third. So minus two third minus one to the power n minus one third two to the power n is your f of n. Okay, uh, let's check. Uh, What are you? What were you getting for uh, f? F one was zero, right? Yes. Is it coming out to be zero? Yeah. F two. What were you getting for f two? One. F two was four by three. So then it's not correct. No, no, no. It starts becoming corrupted. <laughs> so why did you take this to be f of n though? Actually, I was trying a recursive relation. So this is something called the auxiliary equation, but uh, you need not know all that thing. Anyways, uh, see, uh, in this case, in this case, uh, in this case, I think you have to take a guess. Uh, I have to, you have to take a call uh, with the pattern. So there is no other route to that. So if you use that telescopic sum, you will only end up getting stuck with this relation. So yes, F0 is minus 1. F1 is 0. F2 is 1. That will only reach to Fn is equal to n minus 1. Can't say anything. But yes, uh, you can say from here that, can you say from here that it's going to be a linear function? Can you say from this that it's a linear function from here? Because quadratic term will, generate a function of n right so as soon as you can prove linear then we already have enough because we have f of f of yeah. n is equal to y minus 2 if you can prove it's linear then i think we can we can directly take in a function as ax plus b and proceed but is the question here is if a function satisfies a condition like this is it always linear Let's say if you take a quadratic and if you subtract this, you'll be get a n square minus b n and c will get cancelled off. So this will become a, yeah, this will leave you with 
टू एन प्लस टू इन टू टू प्लस टू बी विच यू लीव अ टर्म ऑफ एन एटलीस्ट या इट हैज टू बी लीनियर सो रुचिर वॉज नॉट कंप्लीटली रॉन्ग या दिस हैज टू बी लीनियर If it is linear, then yes, you can go ahead and prove that it is n minus one. So, if it is a linear term, then a n plus two plus b is equal to a n plus b plus two. So, two a plus b is equal to b plus two. So, a is going to be one. Okay, and if a is one, that means your function, your function is n plus b kind of a thing and you know f0 is minus 1 right that means uh, 0 plus b is minus 1 so b is minus 1 so this function was n minus 1 okay so these are the type of questions you can expect in advanced version it will not come in uh, je main for sure fine so with this we close the chapter of functions for you